Today's subject is getting these carriages to work. They look pretty good. They don't look as though they're missing anything. They are not particularly dirty, but they don't work right. Okay, the carriage. That button is jammed. That one will depress fully, but it won't lock. That one will depress part of the way. And this one, which should clear the others, is moving freely, but I can't tell if it's working. So, first of all, I'm going to spray in some LPS-1 so that any corrosion might get washed out. I really don't see any. And do the beginnings of lubricating. Then we'll let it sit a minute and see if things have loosened up at all while we go on to the other one. That one will fully depress. That does clear it. That one fully depresses, but that did not clear it. That fully depresses. And it clears this one, but not this one. So similar, though different problems. Cleaning and lubing never hurts, so we'll start with that. When one has been sitting, Jack always tells me to use the LPS one first because in addition to cleaning, it displaces moisture. And if the humidity has gotten into the act, it's not a help. We can always take this apart if we have to. And all of this stuff can soak in Marvel Mystery Oil for a real deep clean if it needs it. There was a little bit of rust there, and this sponge is proving remarkably effective on those. A few minutes has passed, during which time I've been working LPS-1 into the crevices and working the buttons. And now they're not nearly as stiff to push, and each one responds as it should. And everywhere I saw anything that shouldn't be there, I've scrubbed with this and surprisingly all of the little bit of rust and metal that didn't look like it was supposed to has been coming off let's do that one more time with that kind of action i feel that after i clean the surfaces of it this carriage could get a trial oops there's a little bit more something that doesn't look right okay after several quite a few more minutes of work i believe that this carriage is responding normally when i press the normal knitting button looks like an upside down v both of these slide into the position they're in they start out up here when you cancel them both go down and hold at first, only this one moved, so I guess this one had some stiffness due to corrosion or crud or just dryness on the post, and now I've cleaned that out enough that it works. The next one is the tuck button. This area comes towards us or down towards the machine, and zero releases it. This is the circular knitting button, and I think this is correct that it only puts one of these. I'm going to call it a flipper, that it doesn't really flip, but just to have something to call it. One flipper into the normal knitting position. I think that is right because that knits both directions. It stands to reason that this would knit one direction. So I believe this carriage is ready to knit with. Now here's the kind of thing that people find when they say they've cleaned it and it is clean and I believe them, mine is clean now, but it won't knit. Here's the kind of thing that can be happening. That button responds, but nine times out of 10, it's not putting these flippers into the position and keeping them there and it's not even moving this one at all. I don't know why 
I would have thought maybe I'm missing a spring on the inside, except this one moves freely, and this one doesn't move at all, and that's not the action of a spring. That's either something frozen or jammed in the wrong position, so it's preventing movement in there. So we got to follow that up. Cancel does something, but not really what we want, because this should be in position. And I don't think I can get it to stay there for you. And then cancel should release it, but cancel's just jiggling it. Tuck is correctly moving, but also not sticking in position. And circular knitting should move a flipper, but it's doing nothing. And I, I think I would crumble this before I could force it to go. And wiggling it around for position doesn't make any difference. So, time to go farther on this one. In the Superba Vault, which is a wonderful resource, there is a file explaining which screws will release the cover. And I was starting on that when Jack said try some more croil. So I did. Actually, I thought we were out of croil, but he found me a can. Well, it has started to loosen up. But this is not coming all the way down as it should. It'll go that far now. And did you see it just pop back the way the release should do? It's not working correctly yet. That almost is right. But the release still isn't releasing it. And if we were to knit with this one not quite in position, well, we wouldn't knit, we would jam. So I have to keep working. And although the release will not yet release it, tapping the tuck stitch will. There's the position it will now achieve and stay there. And that right hand flipper is not correctly positioned. Progress! It's staying in tuck position. It's only once so far, but at least we know it can do it. Okay, now we're cooking. Watch this. Both are correctly positioned. They got released! And Tuck came down and is holding in position and is releasing. Still no joy here, but I will keep working. Several drops of croil and much wiggling and jiggling later. Let's try this guy again. The cancel button is now working. That's normal knitting. Working. Tuck. Working. Ta-da! And you won't believe this. Of course, I had croiled it. And I sat and it tried and I tried and it tried and nothing worked. And Jack came along and went, what a show off. I guess the machine just knows. Don't even start with him. And of course, you're supposed to be able to push two buttons at once. There we go. And have them both engaged because there are occasions when we use that. That's tuck and circular. Release. Tuck and regular knitting and release. And I think that when it didn't work a moment ago, I was pressing on this and that might have impacted things because I had it down like that. So, normal knitting, tuck knitting, circular knitting, two middle buttons, two end buttons. Yes! The beds are not ready to test yet, but the carriages are. So I thought that I would put them on my S48. We can test a couple of things that way. One, is it true that Superbas are really as interchangeable as they say? And obviously, it is true. Here you are seeing me run through all the functions first without any yarn. Because if we're going to get bulking and dragging and jamming, I would rather not have yarn getting into the act. I would rather solve it ahead of time. Happily, none of that occurred. I tested ribbing and stockinette on one bed only. 
And after I tested every function without yarn, I did the same things with yarn with wonderful results. It's knitting quietly. It's not making any mistakes. It knitted ribbing and stockinette and half fisherman's rib and tubular knitting. I checked to see if the needle return keys, in fact, brought needles back from hold and let them in hold upon my request, and it did. So this is really great progress. One thing it means is that even if I should not be able to fully restore the bed, I have spare carriages for this machine that is working, and that's a great thing to have. By the way, you'll see a bubbly looking surface on my dial, and I wondered about that, and I took a close look, and did you know the original cellophane that is put there to protect the dial and shipping was still in place. I peeled it off, and it's smooth and blemish-free. I hope your projects are going as well. See you tomorrow.